Well, hello again, everybody. Um, hey, so you have finished your Grow Creature Lab, and I wanted to give you a, a few pointers about making the graph from your data and writing your conclusion. These are the two things that I'm going to assess for you. Um, the graph is something that I want you to hand make. Um, I'm hoping that you find some graph paper that you have from your sixth or seventh grade composition notebook that you used in math because they had graph paper in them. Um, so I'm hoping that's something that you can do. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new to Flipgrid, but eventually I'm gonna ask you to use Flipgrid and, and show me your graph when you talk to me in Flipgrid. So that'll be coming up soon. But I wanna make a few pointers about making the graph. The, um, the graphing packet that I had given you was to help you prepare for making this graph. And most of those graphing skills were really good hints and suggestions for making graphs. So I'll just go through each one. Graphing skill number one was about choosing the right type of graph. For your graph of the data for the Grow Creature Lab, um, a couple of graphs may have been appropriate. So I'm gonna show you a sample from a student in class. I helped to guide him through this. One student thought that a line graph was appropriate because there was a change over time. And uh, another student thought, but I wanna show a comparison graph between the grow creatures in the salt water and the plain water, and they wanted to make a bar graph. So I'm gonna show you samples of those. I said either was acceptable. Now the second graphing skill was about labeling the Y and X axes. Now we learned from the graphing packet that you need to uh, put the independent variable along the X horizontal axis. And the dependent variable is along the vertical Y axis. That is very important. So let me show you what a student did um, I should block their name. <laughs> um, this student put time spent in plain and salt water as the independent variable. Our independent variable in this experiment was that we manipulated what kind of water they were in and we determined how much time they spent in there. So we made that along the X axis. Along the Y axis, the dependent variable was what we measured to see if the type of water made a difference. And we measured in class, we measured mass, but you measured length, most likely. If you didn't have a scale, you measured length. And that would be your dependent variable. So this student equally spaced apart each of the days that the data was recorded. The student, I thought this was a good idea too, day zero, that was in the, um, in the data table. That was the day that no changes had happened. And we plotted that right along the Y axis here. And then we had day one, day two, day three. And boy, what a change in the grow creature that was in the plain water. There was a little bit of change in the one in the salt water. So this is a change over time graph. That's a line graph. Let me show you a student who decided to make a bar graph. And this was okay too. Um, again, the independent variable was the, the type of water and the dependent variable was the grow creature's mass. And if you measured length, you'll make length as your dependent variable. The student equally spaced apart the bars. And oh, in each case, there's a key on the graph to say what color was for the um, salt water and which was for the, the plain water. In this case, yellow is for the salt water and the red is for the plain water. And you can see in that graph which one uh, increased in mass more than the other. Okay. So that's how we labeled the axes. Um, graphing skill three was an important one too because it, it gave you a technique for figuring out how do I scale the axes? How do I decide which numbers to put along each of the axes? 
And it was suggested in the packet that you look at the highest and lowest numbers of your data and you decide on how many intervals, that is how many spaces you have to work with and divide by that. And it gives you a, a ballpark number for what you should space it out by. So for instance, um, this student's data for mass, um, they decided to go by 0.4 and it fit pretty well. This student decided to go by ones and it worked pretty well going by ones. So it depends, different people had different data and you need to decide what to count by, how to scale for you. Um, let's see, graphing skill number four was about plotting points. If you make a line graph, you need to correctly plot the points. Graphing skill five didn't have anything to do with this graph. Graphing skill six was very important. It was about creating a title for your graph. And in that, again, it told you, you needed to know about your independent and dependent variables because the proper way to title a graph is not using a general title like you would for a whole lab report. Like, like this is called the Grow Creature Lab, but you don't name the graph that. Be very specific. To title the graph, you it, it suggested in the packet, start with however you labeled the Y axis versus what's on the X axis. Y versus X. You can use the very labels that you used on your graph or you can add some words to it. So let's see, I will look at some samples. This student said, grow creatures mass versus time spent in plain and salt water. That works. Another student said, the relationship between the mass of the grow creature and the type of water it was placed in. So those are a couple of samples. You start with what's on the y-axis and then what's on the x-axis. That's a great way to title a graph. So those are some hints and points um, for making a good graph. I provided you uh, as a doc with a checklist of things. So make sure you use that checklist so you're making um, a good graph. Now, the other thing I'm, I'm going to be sharing with you is a document for, for writing a, a good conclusion about this Grow Creature Lab. Um, when you look at that document, you'll see it is recommended that you write four paragraphs for the Grow Creature conclusion. There are a lot of things to discuss in the Grow Creature Lab. Um, I'm gonna give you a few pointers about what, now you can consult that document. Hold on, let me grab that. I'm oh, sorry, there we go. Just using my notes. Where did I put them? Oh, hold on. So sorry, I'm back. So it was recommended in paragraph one that you describe your experiment. When you describe your experiment, you're also remembering to tell about the independent and dependent variable. And if you found that there were any experimental errors that could have affected the results, you can describe them then. In paragraph two, it asks you to analyze your results. In this part, you can tell whether your hypothesis was proven or not proven. And I stress that you don't have to say whether you're right or wrong. It's not about that in a scientific investigation. It's more about what I had predicted. Was that proven to be the case or not proven? It's not about being right or wrong. And most importantly, you are using your data to explain and analyze what happened at the end. Um, it was, it's recommended in the document. It says, tell how much bigger in mass the creatures got in plain and salt water from the end to the start. And you know, a, a really interesting way to analyze your data is to take the last day of data that you got, divide it by the first 
recording of data that you did on the first day that you started, that will tell you how many times there was an increase in its length or in its mass, whatever it was that you were able to record. And do that for plain water and salt water. Divide the last reading by the first reading and it'll tell you how many times it increased. That's a, a way to analyze your data and help explain your results. In paragraph three, you're describing what you learned about grow creatures. And I provided a couple of videos and a couple of articles for you to read um, and look at that would help to explain why grow creatures work the way they do. Um, you should have read about, I'm gonna show this. You should have, in a video, you learned about diapers and what's inside the lining of the diapers. There's that powder inside there. There are some fibers and things, but there's a powder that contains superabsorbent polymers. You read an article about Orbeez and another article this week you read about, um, they call them expandable water toys. And that's what our grow creatures were. They were the expandable water toys that have polymers in them. And the polymers are the things that allow water to come in and fill spaces in between the molecules and expand in size. So diapers have that. Um, there was, if you read it, if you wanna go back to those articles, it told about the history of the companies that developed those kinds of polymers to hold on to water. And go back if you wanna put any of that in your conclusion look back in your research. It also said that you can explain why the creatures in the salt water didn't grow much. There was a video for you to watch about the history of salt. And in it, it explained how ancient Egyptians in the mummification process used salt to dry out the bodies. It also talked about the, um, the idea of preserving meats by salting the meat, and that draws out the moisture and keeps it from going bad. It keeps it from bacteria breaking it down and making it decompose. Salt is something that takes moisture away from. It's not so much that, it's not that salt crystals were blocking water from coming in. It's the way salt interacts with the water. It prevented it from being absorbed. And that's what salt does. Um, I, I don't like to mention this, but maybe some of you know, um, if you've, if anyone ever thought of, it's not a good idea, but if somebody sprinkled salt on a worm, the worm could actually die, suffocate and die because a worm's skin has to stay moist because it breathes through its skin. And if you use salt to take away the moisture on the outside of a worm, it wouldn't be able to breathe. Salt takes moisture out. And the last paragraph of your conclusion, it says to discuss further questions or ideas. So sometimes doing a lab like this makes you think, oh, I wonder if, if we take the grow creature and then do this with it, what would happen? There are other kinds of investigations that could be done with these grow creatures. And the last paragraph is for you to describe those things that you have as ideas or, or further questions that would lead to another investigation. So I just wanted you to, to know, these are the things I've told, um, told other students to think about as they write their conclusions and as they make their graphs. So I hope that's helpful. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so if you're, if uh, soon I will be setting up a flip grid for you to share these things with, but I want you to create these things and then, um, I'm going to ask you to share some things in a Flipgrid. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, you can give me an email and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. I hope you enjoyed watching the grow creatures. Thank you.